when I was on Sunset Plaza, we had a kitchen and we had four panels on the, in the kitchen. And we decided to shoot Polaroids of everyone that came to the office. Some of them don't have names on their pictures because I don't remember who they are. But then in about the middle of this project, I started putting names on them. So I'll remember. The sad part is that some of them have passed on. Like here is one of Bob Kardashian, the famous father of. He, he passed away a few years ago, but he was in the, somewhat in the record business for a while. Here's Ron Wisner. He managed Michael Jackson during the Thriller album and also managed uh, uh, Madonna. Here's Chucka Khan. Um, here's a hair band from the 80s, Warrant. And uh, this is a sad thing, The Boys. This is a, a group of Motown and there was also Boys to Men. So they got confused and lost in the sh shuffle. Johnny Rivers was my partner and Soul City Records with the Fifth Dimension. Here's Michael Jackson's bodyguard. And here's Jackie Jackson. Here's Which one's the bodyguard? This guy. Oh, I remember that guy. And here's Jimmy Webb, famous songwriter, Up, Up and Away, MacArthur Park. By the time I get to Phoenix, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> here's the Nelson Twins. They were a hair band for about a year and then they burned out. And here's Michael Jackson's band, Michael Ruff, Randy Stern, Don Boyette. Here's Natalie Cole and her son. She passed away. Steve Tyrell. Michael Butler, he wrote Hair, a musical. Jimmy Barnes was an artist from Australia. Didn't make it here, but he was very big in Australia. Florence LaRue from The Fifth Dimension. Um, Chaka Khan. Um, Kylie Minogue, another Australian that was big in Australia. She was on soap operas there and she sang an album and then went back to Australia. Um, Dweezil Zappa, Frank Zappa's son. Jim Capaldi, he passed away. He was with Traffic, Steve Winwood's band. And George Benson and, and Earl, George Benson and Earl Klug did an album together. Uh, Carmine Apiece was a, a, from a group called Blue Murder and White Snake, two different bands from the 80s. Uh, James Darren, Michael uh, uh, Mercer Ellington, uh, Duke Ellington's uh, brother. John Tesh, Yanni. Yanni was unknown when we took over marketing him and made him a star. Paula Abdul, the same thing. She was totally unknown and we got her a nice cake for her first number one record. That was in our office. Captain from Captain and Tennille. Lou Rawls, that's his son, Lou Rawls Jr. Taylor Hackford, we worked with Taylor Hackford, famous film director, officer and a gentleman. We worked on him with uh, La Bamba, the soundtrack to La Bamba. Brilliant guy, knew music, he really knew his music. Peter Cetera from Chicago, the group Chicago, that is. Wright said, Fred, remember the song, I'm Too Sexy? There were three dentists from England. They didn't know what they were doing, but they were dentists. But they put this record together, I'm Too Sexy. It was a huge hit. On this other wall are uh, the, uh, put all the record business attorneys together. They're all from the land of uh, law. Uh, Mark Cerami had a, a had a, an album, and I don't know, but a, a record company with Capital, uh, with the, the really hard uh, rap guys, always being threatened, uh, and uh, several times they tried to kill him. And that was the kind of record business that I didn't want to get into. 
and these just overflow. These are four panels that are up on our kitchen wall. Here is Bob Merlis, actually. Laura, yeah. did you see this? Wait. Still wearing bow ties. Bob Merlis. Oh, always. Yeah. And I'm right under Chaka Khan. Yeah. <laughs> If you ask me to name the ones that don't have names, I couldn't tell you who they are. But I should have started earlier to put names on them. There's uh, Michael Lippman, I'm no relation, with his hands under his chin. They had George Michael and his, his um, partner, I forget his name, but they were managing uh, George Michael. I got a great story about George Michael. We were working on the album Faith for George Michael. And it looked like it had a chance to go number one. And Paul Smith called me, who was president of Columbia Records uh, Distribution. And he said, I hear that you uh, think the album's going to go number one. I said, yeah. And he said, well, our research so shows that it isn't. Columbia Records research shows that it's not going to go number one. And I said, yeah, well, we think it's going to go number one. And I had no clue as to whether it would or wouldn't. And I had my fingers crossed and my toes crossed and I had everything crossed, hoping and praying that it would go number one. So I went to Billboard, who uh, Tom Noonan, Tom Noonan was in charge of uh, charts. And I bought a pair of uh, knee pads and I went into his office and climbed up on his desk and I said, please, Tom, make it number one. And it went to number one. After that, Columbia Records couldn't hire us for, they wanted to hire us for everything that they worked on. They thought we were really special and it was all perception. It had nothing to do with reality. I'll show you the picture of Tom and me.